Hello and welcome to Epak Shala. In this module, we will be talking about jacquard weaving. I am Dr. V. A. Murlidhar from the Department of Textile Technology, Anna University, Chennai. Let us start with a brief intro about us to what jacquard is and when was the machine actually invented. Jacquard was developed by a French weaver and merchant Joseph Marie Jacquard. The shedding system is used for weaving designs beyond the scope of a cam and adobe shedding system. With the jacquard shedding system, individual ends can be controlled independently and thus large intricate figure designs with several hundreds or more ends working independently or differently can be manufactured. Upon a similar number of picks can be produced easily. Okay. So that is what I mean to say is uh, you have a very large design depending on uh, hundreds of ends and picks which could be manufactured easily using a jacquard because each and every thread would be independently handled, independently operated by a jacquard machine. So as to how this jacquard is actually being classified, primarily they are broadly classified as an ordinary jacquard and a special jacquard. So what is this ordinary jacquard? These jacquards are extremely versatile and can be used to produce figure designs in almost any type of construction and whereas the special jacquard these jacquards are built for special construction which restricts their application but may result in certain advantages in their own field of operation these special machines include for example the self tooling jacquard the leno brocade jacquards then the inverted hook jacquards which are all special purpose jacquards Jacquards are further classified based upon the type of shed they form, the pitch of the jacquard and the figuring capacity of each and every machine. Now based upon the shed type, the shed formation is dependent on the mechanical action of the jacquard and it influences the speed at which the jacquard works. Further, on occasions the shedding system may have a bearing upon the construction of the design. A single lift jacquard generally forms a uh, bottom closed shed. Sh center shed is formed by center closed shed. And a double lift jacquard generally forms an open or a modified open shed. That is the fineness or the number of hooks uh, needles per square inch. Uh, so jacquard may be manufactured in a variety of pitches broadly distinguished as the fine or coarse jacquards. The pitch regulates the dimension of the jacquard machine. Jacquards classified beneath shed type could be set in any of the pitch types. Okay. Now the figuring capacity. The figuring capacity of the jacquard is the size of the jacquard and it refers to the number of interlacements of each of which the machine is capable of. It may range from 100 to 1792 hooks now we will go into the principles of operation. Jacquard shedding are transferred from point paper to pattern cards in the form of a holes and blanks. A hole in a pattern card indicates lifting of an end. However, a blank indicates a lowering of an end to the bottom shed. One pattern card controls the selection of all the ends for one particular pick. Figure 2.1 shows the working components of a single lift, single cylinder jacquard machine. A side view of the single lift jacquard, so the different components here is, uh, you can see a cylinder on the right hand side, then you can see the needle box, then you can see the hooks, then you can see the knife and the griff bar, and you can see the lingos attached to the bottom of the, yeah, you can raise it. So when a needle is opposed by a blank in with a punch in the, in the punch card. As the cylinder moves in and presents the card to the needle, the needle encountering the blank forces the needle back and this in turn presses the hook clear of the knife just prior to the upward movement of the grip bar. Where you have a blank and the blank presses the needle back thereby moving the knee hook clear of the knife bar. So in the second scenario, when the needle is opposed by a hole in a punch card, as the cylinder moves in and presents the card to the needle, the needle encountering the perforation in the card enters the corresponding hole in this cylinder. 
and no action takes place. This allows the hook connected to the needle to remain over the knife which in its upward movement takes the hook with it, thus lifting the end into the top of the shed. Now consider a 400 hook capacity jacquard machine. This machine can handle 400 ends working independently, requiring 400 vertical arranged hooks and 400 horizontal arranged needles. The needles can be arranged in the rows of 8 and each row will have 50 needles. Hooks which are connected to ends through harness cords are also arranged in the row of 8s and each row having 50 hooks. One knife bar is responsible for lifting and lowering one row of hooks. However, and the lifting and lowering of the ends will be ascertained by the selection mechanism of the punch card. The needles are connected with springs at the opposite side of the cylinder to enable the needle move clear of the knife bar or hold its position depending on the presence of a blank or a hole in the punched card. The nick present in the needle, a small nick which is encircling the needle, it is nothing but a small bent portion which is encircling, encircling the needle, will bring back the hook which is tilting away from the vertical plane of the knife. In a single lift, single cylinder jacquard, if the loom speed is 300 picks per minute, the cylinder will have to turn 300 times and the knife will have to move up and down 300 times. This mechanical movement actually impedes or limits the speed of the loop. So we will just look into the, the different types of harnesses and the, and the design calculations. Okay. A jacquard is generally placed on top of the loom with the card cylinder in front or back called the Norwich system or at the left or right of the loom called the London system. In the London arrangement, the card cylinder is at this side and the long rows of the hooks are at perpendicular to the comb of both. Therefore, the harness cords are crossed with each other as it passes from the neck cord to the holes in the combo board. Whereas in the Norwich arrangement, the card cylinder is at the back of the loom with a long row of hooks parallel with the length of the combo board. The harness cords are not crossed. In tying the harness, the first hook taken when facing the cylinder is on the right and the other hook follows in consecutive orders from 2 to 8 as indicated in figure 3.1. If the jacquard has as many hooks as there are figuring threads in the full width of the fabric, then only one harness cord is connected to each hook and the tie is called as a single tie. However, if there are more figuring threads, then the layover or repeating tie is used. In, in a layover tie-up, the number of hooks tied up gives the maximum number of threads in the repeat in width of a design. For example, consider a 400 hook capacity jacquard operating 400 independent ends. Now, if the fabric has 4000 ends, then 10 repeat of the design can be produced on the entire width of the fabric. Assuming the hooks are arranged in 8 rows and each row having 50 hooks, then each hook will effectively control 10 ends. That is simple math arithmetic that is 4000 divided by 400 which will give you 10 repeats in each. Okay, the interlacement pattern of ends is the first end, the 400 and first end, the 800 and first end, the 1200 and first end, similarly the 1600 and first end, 2000 and first end, 2400 and first end, 2800 and first end and 3201st end and the last this by repeat will be 3601st end will be similar. So all this number 1, 401, 801, 1201, 1601, 
So, each hook would have 10 harnesses tied up in this order. All hooks across the design are similarly tied up as is depicted in figure 3.2. Individual harness cards pass through the perforations of the comber board and dead weight called as a lingos which pull the harness card are attached to the end of the harnesses. Yeah. So, in this figure you can see the straight and the layout type. Okay. So, set of the harness is decided by the number of holes in the comber board. Usually, the number of holes in each short row of a jacquard and the combo board are similar as shown in figure 3.3. Thus, an 8 row jacquard machine will be 8 holes in the wooden combo board for a coarse set. For a medium set, the holes are staggered to give a much more space between the holes. However, in case of a fine set, harness, the comber boards may contain twice the number of holes as in a regular design. In tying up, the harness cords from the first row of hooks are passed through the odd holes and for the second row through the even holes. The size of the repeat. Now, how is the size of the and what is the size of the how does the size of the repeat reflect uh, influence the jacquard capacity? Let us have uh, this thing. The size of the repeat in weaving depends on the finished state of fabric because the finished fabric contains more number of threads per unit space than a loom state because obviously the, when the material is on the loom it would be in a stretched condition the moment the tension is removed on the loom the fabric tends to shrink back and because of which the design developed on the fabric would also shrink and would be of a much smaller size compared to what is actually during weaving. So, jacquard design required to be constructed in accordance with the finished condition of the cloth. For example, if a cloth contains 40 inch per centimeter and 40 pix per centimeter, when finished a design 10 centimeter long and 10 centimeter width will repeat upon 40 into 10 that is 400 pix. That is 400 cards and 40 into 10 is 400 inches. The repeat length in a jacquard is theoretically unrestricted. However, in practice, there is a limit to the number of pattern cards that can be conveniently mounted on a machine. So, the width of the, width of the repeat is more restricted than the length. As in the loom, it cannot exceed the space occupied by one division of the harness in the comber board. The major factors influencing the width sizes of the repeat are the harness tie-up, cloth construction and the set of the harness. For example, again assume that the cloth contracts around 12 percent from the reed width on finishing. A 400 hook tie with 40 harness cards per centimeter will give again a simple arithmetic that is 400 divided by 40 minus 12 percent. So, that is approximately around 8.8 .8 centimeter width of the design repeat in the finished cloth. So, we will go into the brief about the count of a design paper. So, the design paper actually come in different counts and different sizes uh, because the corresponding horizontal and vertical space uh, each corresponding horizontal and the vertical space indicate a, a warp and a weft thread. So, the horizontal spaces correspond to a weft thick and each vertical space is a warp end and a hook of a jacquard. For convenience, the point paper is divided by thick lines, usually into square blocks. To make it conveniently for a person using a piano card cutting machine to cut the or punch the cards, uh, in a piano card cutting machine, if you are aware of the cutting system, there are around uh, 8 punch keys which are there on the back side, which is used to punch a hole or a blank in the uh, card. So, for convenience, the point paper is divided into blocks of 8 by a thick line, usually a square block. Okay. For the card cutting, the vertical ruling on the design paper is arranged to coincide with the jacquard hooks. That is the for the card cutting, the vertical ruling of the design paper is arranged to coincide with the jacquard hook. Okay. The design is divided into a number of vertical spaces as there are hooks in the short row of the jacquard. For example, the design paper 
used for an 8 row jacquard will have 8 vertical spaces between each pair of thick lines. To retain the correct proportion and shape of the figure, the number of vertical and horizontal spaces to be in the same portion as the ends and picks per unit space of the finished cloth. The necessity to use proper ruled paper is illustrated using a small motif of a spot figure in figure 5.1a, b and c. In a, the spot wave is repeated on equal number of ends and picks graph paper. The same spot wave is repeated in twice the number of ends as in A would look like and shown in B and C represents the spot repeat on twice the number of picks to A. So uh, you can see the in A the design repeating on equal number of ends and picks whereas in the case B it is twice the number of ends compared to the picks whereas in case C it is twice the number of picks compared to the ends. So I think this is uh, the significance or importance of fine paper in designing the uh, if you due diligence is not done in selecting the appropriate prop, uh, fine paper the final figure or motif would get distorted and uh, what is there in the designer's mind would not get actually reflected on the fabric. So it is very important to look into the fine paper appropriate point paper taking into consideration the set of the fabric to go ahead with the designing or development of the jacquard design okay so we will see the construction and development of a design the construction and development of a jacquard design is one of the tedious and time consuming process a lot of time skill experience and expertise is required to develop a jacquard design design or the motive for the jacquard design could be from the previous things or it could become some uh, artifacts which are to be photographed or some antique this thing which has to be converted into design so all these things uh, it has to be selected for inspiration of some motif which could be an artifact or is trying to reproduce a design which is already been produced as a fabric so he has a base motif of that design in his mind once the selecting the initial stages, the selection of the design or figure for the woven sample has to be done. Once that is done, then the second stage is how to go about with the reproduction of this design. That is, you have either an original sketch or you have a uh, design to be reproduced. Fine. Second stage is enlargement of the design or figure on the point paper. Now, you, the selected motif or the selected design has to be transferred from the photograph or from a fabric onto the point paper. While transferring, you will have to take the ends and pick the set of the fabric. So, the, obviously, what will happen? The small photograph would have to be enlarged on a larger graph paper. According to the set of the cloth, that is the number of ends and picks required for one repeat of the design. Okay. And the third stage is the enlarged design has to be squared out ends and picks are shown in rectangular this things so you cannot have smooth curves coming uh, the smooth curves would be possible only if the set of the cloth is fine so what has to be done the figure which has been enlarged on a point paper or a graph paper has to be squared out on the edges such that you have a clear definition of the figure on the point paper okay then uh, for the sake of convenience the positive of the design or which part of the design is the designer wants to have give emphasis to in is this thing you will either use a small light color paint positive and negative of the design this fourth stage is the introduction of a suitable weave for the development of the design as designs uh, weaves have to be selected according to the emphasis of each and every component of the design so that's again a tedious process you have to select the weaves for the each and every component then you'll have to insert the weaves and then the Ground weave is also, be also has to be marked for the development of a jacquard design. Post this preparation that is from the selection of the motif design transfer to the enlarged and transferred on the graph sheet. Following this we will have to go to the preparation of the card that is the card punching uh, graph sheet has to be squared out using a black this thing in rows of 8 depending corresponding to the size of the jacquard. Once that is blacked out uh, using a suitable card cutting machine the cards has to be punched. 
and the punched card has to be laced together and then the laced has to be mounted onto the jacquard to produce the fabric. To sum up the module on jacquard weaving, let us just uh, briefly look into as to what we have seen in this module. So we initially started looking into as to how the jacquard machine has been classified based on the design. The then we saw the application of an ordinary jacquard and the application of this special jacquard. And followed by that we saw how the jacquard was classified using the type of shed, using the type of uh, pitch, using the figuring capacity. Then we just briefly discussed into the principle of operation as to how a single lift single cylinder jacquard actually works and the working mechanism was dealt in detail as to how the actual single lift single cylinder jacquard would work when a card is uh, opposed by a hole or a punch at the card cylinder. And then we saw as the harness, uh, the size, uh, the, what type of, what are the different type of harness system which is actually used along with the design calculations. So then we went on to the uh, size of the repeat as to how the size of the repeat is influenced by the set of the cloth as to what is the significance between the set of the cloth and the count of the design paper. Uh, what is the uh, significance of a count of paper on the design being developed? Then we thought about when we went into the development and construction of an actual jacquard design as to what are the different stages involved in the construction of jacquard design. Thank you.